Hey everyone, so last season we released a beginner's guide to jungling that was super popular with all the new players in our community. With the new season on the horizon, as well as many changes to the game already in the pre-patch, we thought it was a perfect time to release an updated, comprehensive beginner's guide so that any new players can find what they need in one place. And we just want to remind you that this is a video for new players. We'll be going over things like how smite works, beginner-friendly champions and pathing, how to gank, as well as tons of beginner-friendly tips throughout the whole thing that will give you a much higher chance of succeeding in the jungle. Beyond all of that, throughout the video, we'll be referring you to our other guides where you can find more intermediate and advanced information on specific topics, so you'll know exactly where to look to keep improving in the future. Oh, and if you saw the version of this video for last season, you will definitely see some of the same info again as not everything in the jungle has changed, but there will definitely be new info, fixes, and added tips throughout as well. To start, let's dive into everything you should know and have set up before you hit play. First, we recommend picking 1-3 to three junglers max that you'll stick with for a bit while you learn the basics of the role. Constantly changing champions and having to relearn abilities, combos, playstyles, etc. will really distract from mastering the basics. So, which champions should you play? Well, the main thing that we recommend is playing champions that you enjoy and want to play. If you're new to the game, copying pros or high elo player champion pools is completely unnecessary. Just stick with what stands out to or interests you as long as it's a real jungler who can actually clear camps. But if you want specific recommendations, here are some great beginner-friendly junglers who clear well and have easy-to-understand abilities. And if you find yourself dying in the jungle or getting extremely low on HP, these are beginner-friendly champions who also sustain like crazy, just to remove that concern from your play while you focus on other things. Anyway, once you find a champion that you want to play, we recommend heading to a site like u.gg where they aggregate data and show you what other players are doing that is successful. Another option is something like probuilds.net, but you won't always see your champion there, and again, copying pros is often not the best idea for starting players. They are doing very specific things for very specific reasons that are probably a bit over your head for now. As long as you copy a common build from any of those sites, you should have a really good starting foundation for your champion. Next up, let's talk about easily one of the biggest changes we've seen in the season, jungle items and smite. In past seasons, we upgraded our smite as a jungle item that we purchased at the shop throughout the game. Now that's all changed. Full-on jungle items are gone. Instead, at the start of the game, you'll purchase either the Ember Knife or the Hail Blade for 350 gold. These items are completely identical other than their path effect. The way this works is that after the fifth time you use Smite in a game, it will transform your Smite spell depending on which of these items you purchased at the start of the game. For the Ember Knife, you'll obtain Challenging Smite, which can still be used on monsters and minions, but can now be used on enemy champions as well. When used on an enemy champion, they will be marked for 4 seconds, allowing you to deal additional damage to them, and they will also deal less damage to you. Alternatively, you can pick up Hailblade, which will upgrade your Smite into Chilling Smite, which, just like Challenging Smite, can be used on minions, monsters, or enemy champions. When used on enemy champions, you'll deal a small amount of damage and steal some of their speed, slowing them down while moving faster yourself for a short duration. Both of these options have their place, depending on the game and champion you're piloting. For beginners, we once again just recommend seeing what people are doing on a site like u.gg and following that. There are more important areas on which to spend your brain power while learning than trying to decide which to buy. And as you saw, once you reach that 5 smites point, the item is consumed and that's the end of your jungle specific itemization. It seems like Riot did this so that junglers could focus on getting their mythic item early if they wanted to instead of feeling like they had to finish a full jungle item first. If you're not sure what a mythic item is, we aren't going to dive into that too deeply in this video since it's not really a jungle specific topic. However, if you want to learn more about them, be sure to check out this guide that will cover the basics through a jungle focused lens. Alright, moving on, the last thing that we really want to make sure you know and understand before you hop onto the rift is jungle timers. Throughout the game, you will see these small icons appearing on jungle camps, the scuttle, or monster objectives like herald, dragon, etc. When the gray icon shows, that means that that thing will spawn in 60 seconds. 
At 15 seconds remaining, the icon will turn yellow. However, this will only happen for things that you had vision of since they were killed, such as your own camps that you took or any camps that you or a teammate actually got vision of while they were down. Either way, these timers are hugely helpful for newer junglers, as you can always just glance at your minimap to see what's spawning soon, so keep a very close eye on these. Alright, with all of that covered, let's now talk about how to have a successful first clear of your jungle that fits your champion's strengths. There are two primary basic types of paths, a 3 camp level 3 clear or a slower full clear for level 4. This super simple 3 camp level 3 clear consisting of both buff camps and gromp is great for aggressive early game champions with strong ganking tools who want to start killing opponents right away. And just in case you don't know, the red and blue buff are given to the player that kills these monsters for 2 minutes. Red buff causes your auto attacks to slow your target and burn them for damage over time. Beyond that, while out of combat with enemy champions or epic monsters like Dragon, it significantly increases your health regen. Blue buff, on the other hand, provides you with essentially limitless mana for its duration as well as 10 ability haste, which is a new thing in Season 11 and is similar but slightly different to the old CDR if you're familiar with that. Basically, it just makes your cooldowns shorter. It also provides some passive energy regen if you're playing an energy champion. Anyway, now that we know what those buffs do, you can see how powerful you can be off of a level 3 clear with double buffs, ready to kill some laners. And the other option that we mentioned was a full clear route for level 4. A route like this is usually done on champions who aren't as strong at ganking at level 3 and want to farm up a bit to hit level 6 and unlock their ultimates or just scale for late game. Now, of course, there are quite a few champions who can do both. For example, Vi, Sejuani, and Amumu all have solid ganking power at level 3 with built-in CC, but they also have super strong ultimates that they want to unlock as quickly as possible. So, you could do either with similar champions depending on the game. And remember, we're not trying to teach you the fanciest, most cutting-edge routes that are situational right now. The goal for this video is to give you simple, repeatable routes that are proven to be viable, which these absolutely are. Now, as you've seen with some of these route graphics, you can do them starting at either red or blue buff crossing to the other side of the map. If you're super new and struggle to clear your jungle without losing a lot of HP, you can always just start bottom side to hopefully get a better leash from your bottom lane. Otherwise, once you're comfortable, you can start thinking about which lane you want to gank for after your route. For example, let's say that you're playing Warwick here on the blue side with these lane matchups. In this game, you might want to start top side at your blue and clear toward bot lane to gank there after your route because Leona and Draven have CC and a lot of damage onto the immobile Soraka and Ash, while Garen can't do anything to lock down Nar. Again, if you're not comfortable clearing or analyzing matchups like that, just start out bottom for the leash and that'll be just fine for a beginner who is learning the role. Now, speaking of leashes, one of the most important things that you can learn to do early in your jungle journey is watch who on the enemy team leashed. For example, in this game, our Aatrox here, who happens to be C9 Blabber, is starting out at red, and he's for sure watching the minimap while doing it. He sees that the enemy top laner shows in lane well before the enemy bot lane, who arrives very late around 145. What this almost always means is that the enemy bot lane leashed their jungler at red and that he will be pathing up to the top side of the map from there. This is incredibly valuable information. If you're headed for the opposite side of the map, like in this game, Aatrox can gank bottom or move around in the river without worrying too much about Graves interfering. Alternatively, let's say Aatrox had started blue this game instead of red and Graves still started at red. This would mean that both junglers are headed for the top side and could run into each other. And if you're a beginner jungler and took a lot of damage clearing, it might not be safe to gank or go into the river since Graves could be there. There's a lot of intermediate to advanced strategies that can be used off of watching a leash, so it's a great habit to build early on even if you aren't fully utilizing that information yet. Alright, moving on, one thing that we haven't mentioned yet is every jungler's best friend, the Rift Scuttler. This low buddy first spawns at 315 in both the top and bottom river and provides significant amounts of both gold and XP for how easy it is to kill. Beyond that, they don't even fight back and when they die, they leave a speed and vision shrine in the river for 90 seconds. If you played last season, you'll have noticed some differences here already. Scuttle now spawns with a shield that can be broken with hard CC, whereas in the past, CC just reduced its resistances. 
Beyond that, the crab no longer gives you a bunch of health back when you kill it. That effect has been moved to the Gromp instead. Anyway, if you can, you'll always want to get at least one of these if you can when they spawn at 315, as they're still a great source of gold and XP. If you're doing a fast level 3 clear, you should have time to gank first, then grab this after. But if you're doing a slow full clear, you will be a bit late after 315. But you'll usually still be able to contest it if the enemy jungler is on the other side of the map or a bit late as well. Once both scuttles are taken, one will respawn randomly either top or bottom after 2 minutes and 30 seconds throughout the game and are a nice little mini objective to take when you can. The last thing I want to mention about Scuttle is that it will always run away from you, so you can direct it toward whichever nearby lane is pushing up. That way, if a fight breaks out, they might come help you out or at least stop the enemy from rotating over themselves. Alright, and that's it for this section on your first jungle clear. If you want to know more about how to clear as fast as possible and with tons of HP left over, be sure to head over to skillcap.com where we have a huge course showing you how to clear the jungle optimally on every single jungler in the game. Also, if you're enjoying the video and have learned something, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next upload. Alright, now that we've talked about how to get a good first clear under your belt, let's talk about what often comes next, ganking. First off, Let's talk about which lanes to gank, and there are a few different things we're looking for here. First off, one super simple thing to look for is melee versus melee matchups. These are often trading a lot, getting both sides low on HP, and are ripe for jungle influence after your first clear. Another really simple and easy way to pick a lane to gank is just to gank lanes that are pushed up in lane. But beware that when you do this, sometimes there will be a lot of enemy minions built up. Early game, these can do tons of damage to you and block skill shots from landing. So, you might want to wait for the tower to kill some of those minions first unless you're sure that you can land the kill. Another important consideration for where to gank is CC and how reliably you can land it. So, for example, if you're playing Fiddlesticks, landing CC is pretty much always going to be easy because you can just press Q, which will then allow Ari to land her charm while the target is feared. But what if you're playing Amumu, who has to land a skill shot to get CC down pre-6? Well, then maybe instead you should focus top and gank for your Pantheon. He can guaranteed land his stun, after which you can land your bandage toss. So, if your CC is a skill shot, try to gank for lanes that have non-skill shot or very easy to land CC if you have any, like some of these champions here. Another factor we're going to consider when looking for a gank is how mobile our target is. This is a very simple one. It's easier to gank a level 6 Lux than a level 6 Ari with her ultimate dashes, right? So, try to pick out and target immobile, vulnerable laners when you can, especially if they're pushed up in lane and you can land some CC. Okay, the last crucial piece of info for deciding where to gank is that you generally want to gank for your teammates who are ahead. It can seem tempting to help out your losing teammates, but especially for newer players, this is often a trap that can go terribly wrong. Stick with your strengths and try to snowball your winning teammates. Alright, now that we have an idea of which lanes we should be ganking, let's have some quick, basic tips to improve your execution and odds of picking up a kill. First, you want to try to wrap around behind your target whenever you can. If you can get between them and their turret, they'll usually have to run right to you. And the reason this is so powerful is that it allows you to get in range of your target without using your mobility. So, if Quinn flashes away here, you would still have your E to follow. And speaking of flash, if you have the mental bandwidth, timing an enemy's flash and ganking them while it's down is one of the easiest ways to have successful ganks. If you see an enemy flash, you can hit tab and left click their summoner spell. This will place it in chat for you and your team to see. If you have timestamps for chat on, which we recommend, you now know when that player flashed. Flash is a 5 minute cooldown, so plus 5 minutes to that time and you now have this big window of time to abuse that player in with reganks. Another thing that you can try is waiting a few seconds to see if your target uses a key ability such as CC or movement. In this clip, Kindred wants to gank Morgana but waits a second to see if she'll queue to push the wave, which she does, which triggers his engage. You don't always need to do this, but especially against champions like these ones with long CD movement spells, if you wait a few seconds, not much longer, to see if they'll use it to trade, then it can really increase your chances at a kill. 
All right, now that we have an idea about where we want to gank and some tips for how to be successful doing so, let's cover another key element of the jungle, monster objectives. For this video, we're just going to talk about Dragons and Rift Herald as late game objectives are more of a team or macro topic rather than jungle specific. The first dragon spawns at 5 minutes, then every 5 minutes after its death, and can be soloed safely by most junglers after their first base. If you want to know more about how the elemental dragons work, we recommend checking the wiki as we won't be covering that here. Overall, dragons' benefits are quite low until you can stack 4 of them for a dragon soul. So, if you're new to jungling, we wouldn't recommend making them a super high priority unless you have nothing else to do or your team really wants to kill one. You'll very likely gain more by farming or ganking and practicing those skills until you have a better idea of exactly when you should be taking Dragon. However, the Rift Herald that spawns at 8 minutes and again 6 minutes after its death, if before the Baron spawns at 20 minutes, is a very powerful objective. To kill it, the first thing you'll ideally want to do is tag the monster from the front and walk back out of the pit before dodging the charge. This will bring her out of the pit and make her a lot easier to walk around and to hit that big, pink glowing eye on her back for a huge chunk of damage. You'll also sometimes see her doing this big wind-up where she raises both claws, which can be dodged either by quickly moving to the herald's right, or by simply taking a step back which will deliver the eye right to you. When killed, it will drop the eye of the herald, which you must manually pick up by walking on it, at which point it will replace your trinket. For the next 4 minutes, you can activate this by using your trinket keybind, summoning the herald to destroy nearby turrets. For more information on how to min-max this powerful objective, check out this video here where we give a crash course on how to get a huge advantage from it. This video was made last season, but it's still super relevant, especially the part on Herald, so don't worry if you see some old item icons. Now, the last thing I need to mention about epic monsters is that, as the jungler, it is pretty much always going to be your job to secure the last hit on the objective with Smite. To do this, you'll need to make sure that you check how much damage your smite currently does, which will go up with every level you get, and save it specifically for objective fights. Beyond that, on many junglers you can combine an ability with your smite at the same time to execute from even higher HP. So in that clip that you just saw, my smite does 480 damage. So at 619 HP left on the dragon, I smited and queued to execute it from there. This will prevent the enemy jungler or another high damage spell from stealing it away from you. This can be done on lots of junglers to varying degrees like the ones that you see here and more. Lastly, if you want to practice just your smiting without any other abilities, there's this pretty cool site called Smite Arena where you can train. It is far from perfect and not quite totally realistic, but it's the only place we know of where you can get repeated practice in a short time. Otherwise, this opportunity arises once or twice a game at most. Okay, we've now covered how to get set up before the game, how to have a successful first clear, where to gank, as well as some execution tips to improve your ganks, and the epic monsters of the Rift. To finish this one off, we're just going to drop a few tips. First, one of the absolute most important aspects of jungling is your map awareness, much of which stems from watching your minimap closely. If you're not already checking your minimap constantly, we recommend using something like this video here to build the habit super quickly. You can find the link in the description if you want to check it out. Building this habit really is a must if you want to succeed in the jungle. Next up, if you're new to the jungle, you might be shocked by the amount of flame and hatred thrown your way on the regular. This can be super distracting even for a jungle veteran who has been bathed in the flame for 10 years now. So. One of our biggest tips to new players would be to slash mute all at the beginning of the game or at the first sign of incoming rage. You can still unmute pings if you want to see those. We cannot tell you how much tilt you will save yourself by doing this and how much better you'll be able to focus on the game and improve. And the last tip that we have for you today is about how and when to invade the enemy jungler when you're new. This can be a really scary and intimidating topic for beginners, and if you don't know when to do it, it can have catastrophic results. So, the two main triggers that we would recommend building are number one, if the enemy jungler is dead, then you can usually run into his jungle and steal some camps and drop a ward. And number two, if you see him on the opposite side of the map, ganking or taking an objective, whatever, taking this opportunity to instantly either invade, gank, or take an objective is usually referred to as a cross-map play and is a crucial jungle habit. Anyway, that does it for our ultimate beginner's guide to jungling for Season 11. 
Learning to jungle is a challenging but rewarding journey, and we appreciate that you let us be a part of it. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in future videos.